front. <sighs> All right. And this morning is a thunderstorm. Yep. Let me tell you something right now. This one, I gotta have this coffee. This is gonna be a tough one. They say this shit ain't no joke, baby. Not this morning. fucking a joke. This is not. You got Ian Mc... Mc hmm. Okay. Alright, I'll wait for the Concord to pass before we start. You gotta understand something. We need to thank Ian McTavish for this one. Ian, a wonderful supporter of the show. Thank you, Ian. He's the reason for this here review. And I'm gonna tell you something right now. He sent me an email. Ian always gives me a choice, right? He gave me two choices. It was Super Mario Brothers 3 or this game right here. In my mind, it was a no-brainer. Super Mario Brothers 3. And it's because I'm afraid of this game. I've been avoiding this game. You understand? Because I'm not worthy. And I really mean that. I was like, far, I, I, in my mind, I was like, Super Mario Brothers 3, perfect. Never played it before. This will be interesting. And then he blew it. He wrote me another email. He goes, you know, I was thinking about it. Scratch Super Mario Bros. 3. I want this game right here. And I was sitting there, and it was just like... I just... It was like this. I got the shakes. You think I'm kidding you? This is, this is not... We don't joke around on this show. You need to understand something right now. I'm going to tell you the gravity behind this game is the legend, the prestige, the pedigree. You don't understand. You really don't understand. Listen here, fuckos. We're talking about Castlevania X Rondo of Blood. You, want, you understand back in 1993, I had the option to buy this game. Oh, yeah. I was sitting on my mother's compact Presario, 100 and... This is before we got to 200 and... Uh, the 200 megahertz computer. So this was like probably, probably 150. Maybe less. Dial up. And the only thing that prevented me from buying this game. Is, was every, This was back when everybody was shaky about entering uh, credit card. At least in my house. My father. Don't put credit card information into the computer. Right? That was every, I don't want to put my credit card into the computer. Right, right. So here it was. 
If you wanted to get Dracula X, you had to order it from Japan. That's it. You couldn't go down to your corner store and buy it. <coughs> you either had you had to buy it from the catalog, or you got like Turbo Zone. You had to order all, all the back of the gaming magazines. Yeah, hundred bucks. That's how much it would cost you. Do you, do, you, do you understand that this this the it's it's a crime against everything holy that this didn't come to America? I'm still pissed about it. I'm not kidding. I listen. I'm not against dropping another atomic bomb on Japan for this one. I'm telling you right now. What did we drop? Fat boy? What was the name of the bomb? Fat boy? <laughs> Little boy? Big boy? Right? Something like that? Hiroshima and Nagasaki? Let me... Let me... What do I do? Paint the name on the side of a bomb? I want to do that. Give me the paintbrush. I'll tell you right... I write... What did I write on it? Nigga, please. That, that's what I would write for, for not giving a Dracula X! Fucking shitting me. Are you serious, Japan? I gotta pour a fresh one here. This is getting this is gonna get out of hand. This is why I can't handle this shit, man. Guys, I'm gonna tell you something right now. Never mind the cover art. Alright? Forget the cover art. Is that what we normally first discuss? I don't care. I, I'm not, I'm not, there's so much more to talk about with this game. Ignore the cover up. How about that one? This is a 10 out of 10 game. Legit. Do you understand? It might be the greatest video game ever made. You got it? You want to come tell me otherwise? I'll start digging a hole in my front lawn for you, buddy. Come over here and say it to my face. I'll put a bat across your head. Graphics, 10. Music, 11. This is a 12 out of 12 game, do you understand? Graphics, 12. Gameplay, 12. Music, 12. Sound effects, 12. Level design, 12. 12s across the board. Do you get it? What game do you know that you can definitively say is a 10 out of 10? You can't. You just can't. There are some hmms out there. It might be a, it might be a, you know... Almost 10. This is a 10 out of 10 game. It's Konami's masterpiece. You can tell. You can tell. Konami circled the wagons for this one. Yeah, yeah. There were no interns working on this game. I, I can tell you right now. There were heart attacks and nervous breakdowns and a lot of packs of cigarettes smoked developing this game right now. I'm telling you right now. Oh, yeah. There were guys... 23 hours a day working on this game. You get it? They were cars driving off the road. The cops probably sh showed up. A, a car drove off the road into a ditch. Driver dead. Blew up in flames. So a cop came over. Ah, oh, he must have been working on Dracula X. I don't even know. What are they? I don't even know if they, they, they ride cars in Japan. What do they ride? Bikes? Another guy rode his... His bicycle into a ditch. I, I mean, there what? Let's start. Let's start out by by saying this, okay? It's the greatest Castlevania game of all time. Yeah, that's right. What are you gonna tell me? You had Castlevania one. Okay, it's the original game. I get it. 
Okay, that's probably second. At Simon's Quest, you can just bury it. Nobody cares. Uh, Dracula's Curse, uh, Castlevania Three. I don't get it. Number one, f first of all, the game's trying to hit you over the head the whole time. You got all these fucking cockamamie characters. I'm not in. I'm not in. Sorry. Symphony of the Night. This is this is the original Metroidvania. Yeah. Oh, let's start with the menu screen because you can go back. Isn't that the definition of a Metroidvania game? You can go back and explore. This game, you can go back. There's different paths. You can go back and just explore. That's right. Come on. Not only that, they tried to do it on the Super Nintendo, and they failed in grand regalia fashion. Do you get it? My Christ. Why didn't I have this game as a young man? Are you kidding me? I would have kicked the door open to the school. I would have been slamming heads into lockers. I would have been. I would have had to buy extra copies of this game so I could take the Super Nintendo guys and just slam their head into the game case. This is it, brother. This is the Super Nintendo Slayer. Oh my God. Let's talk about the menu screen. For a second here. Okay, number one, it's like this. You could select your stage. You can save. You can input your name. More than three letters, by the way. You're welcome. What is it? Seven, seven letters. Seven or eight letters. Eight letters. Yeah, you can write whatever you want. Cunt. Fuck you. Go ahead, knock your socks off. It doesn't matter, because you don't see it in the in-game. Maybe you do, but it's in Japanese. How do you translate that? I don't know. What, what are we talking about here? Uh, you, number one, you go to the menu, the menu stage. You have the most beautiful, like, ethereal, cathedral uh, music. singing uh like a, almost like a choir singing right in a cathedral it's gorgeous for this you got to understand about this no stone was left unturned during the design of this game there are no shortcuts that's what you really need to understand a lot of love was put into this game do you get it it's like when you cook dinner uh for your family and if you're just not into it, you're just like, oh, you, I got to cook dinner for these animals. You're sitting there, you're mixing and, and you're just throwing ingredients together. You toss it in the oven. It comes out half burnt. You throw it on the table. My wife says it, okay? She, said, and she says it and it makes perfect sense about whatever she does. Put some love into it. You understand? The woman doesn't take shortcuts. That's one thing I admire about her. When she does something, she puts love into everything she does. And when you do that, magical things happen. Oh, yeah. They put a lot of love into this game. A lot of craftsmanship. There are achievements you can unlock. When you buy, when you buy a Super CD game, okay, back in the day... And you put it into a regular CD player, like uh, you didn't. You had version 2.0 instead of version 3.0, which is basically the Super Systems card. Okay, the Super CD games had no problem telling you to like, uh, you know, go get a job and come back and get a Super Systems card. They would tell you with like a, a little animation or they would tell you like in a woman's voice or something like that, that you need to upgrade to version 3. In Rondo of Blood, they actually give you a separate mini-game. <music> the 
that you could play on your CD player, and it's basically a really cartoony and silly looking Castlevania. It's only a couple of enemies you can kill or something like that, and then a girl comes out and tells you, listen, you gotta get version three. All right, buddy? Start mowing lawns, basically. I want to be on there. I want to come out and say, start mowing lawns, sucker. Get yourself the super systems card. Anyhow. Let's start out here. All right. We're, we're going to start with the intro. Okay. The intro, number one, it's in German. Der Finsternis mit unserem verfluchten Blut zu rufen. Wir wollen, dass sie die Welt regieren. Wir erwarten lächelnd den Niedergang der Welt. Graphics, graphics done in, in Japan and the intro done in German. I got news for you. When you're talking Dracula, I don't even give a shit that it's not in English. When somebody's talking to me, Dracula, talk to me in German, baby. That's authentic Dracula. To me. That's the way I want to hear it. Well, I want to hear some loser talking English. I don't know the story. I don't care. You Richter Belmont. They have the intro. What are you kidding me? He's slinging the fucking vampire killer. You see skulls exploding. He's tying his shoes. Oh yeah. And then you start the game and you get the you get the creaky door. And I'm gonna tell you something right now. This game opens up stage zero prologue. <laughs> You see Simon Belmont come out on a on a horse drawn stagecoach. And the the way the horses are animated, there's like thunderclaps in the background, lightning. You're speeding by in your on your stagecoach on the way to to Dracula's castle to save your girlfriend, who is she? And that cigarette Annette I slow down here. You're riding, you, you gotta understand something. You're riding on the back of the stagecoach, cracking Belmont whip, and death comes flying over. Starts rapping something in Japanese. I don't know what the fuck he's saying. Next thing you know, he's throwing his scythe at you. You're in this mega battle. I, I, you need to understand something here. No music. Just... The, of the horses running. You, ha, you understand how dramatic this is? And the thunderclaps. Oh my god, and then death flies over, he says something in Japanese, he's slinging his, his scythe at you. You're doing battle on the back of, of running stagecoach. He throws this uh, flaming skull at you, flaming blue skull. It's like, oh my Christ. It's like, oh my god, the graphics are fucking unreal. They hold up today. You gotta understand something, this is 1994. And all you Symphony of the Night guys, most of the of the enemy characters' designs in this game were brought over to Symphony of the Night. So suck on it. 
And don't get me started on you Castlevania 4 bozos. All right? Because I'll tell you right now, the whip mechanic in, in, in Castlevania 4, it's a game killer. It's an embarrassment. Nobody saw it. Who could, what was this whip going all over the place? It's like Ernest Evans for the Sega Genesis. Where's this whip going? It's ridiculous. Stop it. Wiggling the whip all over the place. Yeah, I know there's a lot of Castlevania 4 fans out there. And you guess what? You can all fucking suck it. Anyhow. Here we go. So Death Death winds up saying something ends up saying to you something in, Japan, in, in Japanese like Ibaba Jibaba boom. And he hits the fucking road. Next thing you know, you hop off your stagecoach, you're in town. Alright, you start off in town. And here we go. Here comes the iconic Castlevania music. Listen, guys, I'm not a fan of taking chip music and converting it to real music. All right? I'm not a big fan of that. But when this Castlevania music starts, the Red, the red Book audio kicks in. All right? It's like a fucking symphony playing uh, Castlevania music. I mean, the hairs on the end of your nipple stand up. I'm not even joking you right now. that tingle sensation right down your spine. You haven't bought this game yet? Listen, it used to be you couldn't get a hand. I know everybody can get it now, right? I can get it on my PS Vita. I can get it on my DS. Da, 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 da. There were no options. You got you, you understand? Until what? Until the, the, the virtual console came around, right? What were your options before that? This was... Almost unobtainable. You're in town. That castle, that Castlevania music comes in, and it's like, oh my god! You start running with Richter Belmont, hitting with the whip, jumping, and you realize. That the gameplay is completely spot on exactly where it should be. I, I'm not going to stress this enough. The gameplay might be the most sensational part of this game. Richter is agile. The whip cracking's fun. He's got like this jump backwards. This, uh, I mean, it's fantastic. It's fantastic. It's right where it should be. It's exactly where it should be. The graphic, the animations are smooth. Oh my god, the town's on fire. You got skeletons jumping through the window at you. You you know. You, you say, let's just play the first board. And you know you're dealing with something very, very special here.
then you got you come to this area where it's like trees there's like trees it reminds me of what london would be right there's like these a nice park area where it's like trees and like iron gates around the trees the sky's on fire in the background you see the the first boss this dragon flying in the background you know you know this is the enemy that you're going to encounter and man oh man the boss fights let me tell you something the boss fights are uh, incredible. They're incredible. The sound, the groans they make. They come from the background. There's always an animation before the boss comes out. My favorite, I, I'm so, my favorite has to be the Minotaur. Oh my God, what a badass boss. When the Minotaur comes out, he comes out of that cave and he starts with that axe. And he's ripping up the floor. There's pieces of the floor missing. Come on. Come on. This art style completely holds up today. Before we go through the whole game, there are four branching paths you can go down. And we're not talking about, you know, an extra level over here or an extra level over there. We're talking about completely different branching paths in the game. Oh yeah. Branching paths that will take you to other places where you'll unlock other characters. Well, you'll find other characters. There's some like, uh, what is there? Uh, like a doctor in town, his, his daughter or something like that. You had uh, a nun that you can find and Maria Bernard, right? The other playable character in Dracula X. And what a, and Maria Bernard, when you use her, she's a game breaking character. Do you understand? If you beat the game with Maria Bernard, don't come talking to me. You didn't beat Castlevania X. I got news for you. This game is hard. But it, this game is very extremely hard. If you play it with Rick the Belmont, with Maria, it's a walk in the park. She's and listen, I know she's a lot of fun. Everybody loves to use her, and there's a reason for it. She's got the double jump. Maria Bernard has very, very listen. I'm going to tell you right now, it's a cute animation. Little girl, pink dress, blonde hair. She's throwing birds. You know these white doves. I gotta take this fucking jacket off. Anyway, she's a game breaker. Yes, she is. Number one, her attack is like a double attack because you throw it out, it's almost like a boomerang. The birds go out and then they, they hit on the way out and they hit on the way back in. She's got this, this diving like a doggy paddle thing. I don't know what you call it. She does this diving doggy paddle attack. Yeah. Oh, and not to mention, Richter has all the wonderful sub weapons that we've all become accustomed to. Uh, from, you know, Castlevania series. I mean, he's got the the holy water that you throw and it's like green napalm going across the screen. Uh, the clock. Nobody likes the clock. I don't know why. I love the clock. Uh, the fucking daggers. The axe. The classic axe. Oh my god, it's so satisfying using the axe. On certain levels where you have, you know... I love I love how you go through the board where you're in the in the park area there and the candles are just hanging in midair. 
That's my only gripe with the game. That is my only gripe, is that those candles don't aren't on stands. It's like, what, they're just, just floating in air? Is that really what they're doing? My only complaint with the game. So there you go, chalk it up. What's more satisfying than throwing that, that unbalanced axe through the air? And it winds up landing on somebody's head. And you just fall to pieces. That's so satisfying. You whip, 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 whip. Or the stairs as you come through. You whip, whip. This game is built for speed. The gameplay is built for speed. You come through. Whip, whip. The guy's on the second level. Axe. Brilliant. Brilliant. Not only that. Every single sub weapon has a mega attack. Where it's a certain amount of hearts. I don't know. What is it? 20, 30 hearts you use to do the mega attack. And then, and then uh, Rick the Belmont turns into like, a, I don't know, he goes into like a possession. And it's, a, it's like a mega attack. It's fantastic. There's no shortage of surprises in the game. And when you use Maria, she has her own her own subset of weapons as well. She has the turtle shell. She becomes like this, and they're kind of funny, you know? I don't know. She becomes a turtle shell. Like this, this huge turtle shell. It was like when I first did it, I was like, what the hell is this? And then she can like creep across the screen and like basically go, you can go across the level without getting hit but it, the turtle shell can't jump very high and uh, certain enemies can break the shell so there you go she has cat a, a kitten she sets loose <laughs> or is it a tiger i don't know it's a kitten or a tiger it's a little white cat uh doves no not doves other type of birds that fly out like this come back you know her shot flies out it's like a a shot that goes up all right what are you going for me uh a dragon she's got this it's a boss it's a boss breaking uh attack this huge dragon comes out and attacks uh, the enemy takes off a lot of damage um what are some uh, other weapons She's got a bunch of weapons, guys. You gotta take my word for it. And on top of that, they have super attacks. So there's like, so there's like, there's a billion attacks in this game. It's fantastic. And her double jump is sensational. And it's so helpful in the game. It allows you to to to, to uh, get items you wouldn't normally get. It allows you to jump on platforms you wouldn't normally be able to jump on. There's one. There's one scene where I think it's level three. When you're in the church there, and you're walking, it's like stained glass. Every stained glass has different artwork on it. You have these fucking skeletons swinging down from the ceiling, throwing bones. It's like Jason and the Argonauts. The old Medusa heads come through. You know? You have the hunchbacks from from games of old. Remember the hunch? I hate those fucking hunchbacks. Let me tell you something. What's incredible about this game is the fucking AI is insane on some of these uh, enemies. Like when you fight the crows. The, the crows can t to turn you into a fucking mental case sometimes. Sometimes you can just hit them. Sometimes they fly around in such complex AI patterns. It's ridiculous. It's ridiculous, but but the gameplay is so good that if you can't kill them, then you know what? It's on you. It's on you. Oh yeah, the hunchbacks have that that AI. Uh, yeah, so you're in the church and you come up to like this this skeleton, this huge skeleton. It, mid bosses in, in this game are incredible. The 
this huge, like, skeleton, decrepitated, uh, decrepitated. My Christ. That should be a new word. That one, that sounds good, decrepitated. I like that. I'm, I'm using it now. You come across this decrepitated fucking skeleton. He's got this big bone he's attacking you with. You kill him. Now you're in the church. There's pews. There's a big bell above you. She can do a double jump and hit the bell. It goes gong, gong, and prizes fall, fall out of it. There's so much to talk about in this game. When you get to the castle, just just for small small instance, before you get into the castle, you're in like the the yard of the castle. You come up on this knight that throws axes at you, right? You know that guy throws the axes down, throws the axes up. Anyhow, when you kill him, he keels over, and I don't think anybody really realizes this. Okay. He, you know, enemies kind of burst into flames, but he keels over first before he bursts into flames. And he keels over at the screen. There's like three frames of animation for him to f kind of like fall over. Those are the little touches I'm talking about. Do you understand? Those little touches. Little touches like when you use Richter and you get a piece of like turkey in the wall. You know how you get the ham in the wall to eat for your energy? When you're Maria and you crack open that wall, it's a birthday cake. When you're Maria and it's game over, it says game over in colorful uh, bubble letters. Yeah. Yeah. That's what happened. Down at Konami. These guys were strung out, man. They had a coffee machine that looked like the water cooler. These Japanese guys, in a cloud of smoke, they're programming these games. And the boss would come over to you. Say, hey, you know, uh, hey, you know, Lu Chow, I know you've been here for like fucking 19 hours of the day. But we're going to need you to work on that game over sign for Maria when she dies. You know, make it cute. He like goes into his, you know, he's... Papa no dos. Listen, you know the you know the Japanese. They'll they'll fucking they'll fucking give it they'll give everything they have, right? This is like samurai mentality. These there were a bunch of samurais working on this game. Do you understand? There were guys performing Harry Carry in the bathroom. You get into you get into Dracula's castle, and it's the Dracula The music starts. I mean, do you get it? And you're going through the castle, the interior castle. Remember tapestries hanging from the wall, marble in the background. But as you pass the windows, it's raining outside. There's these huge bats flying by through the windows. Those zombies are coming through like this. Like they're hovering. Yeah. And then. You know, I know it's the popular thing to do when you review Rondo of Blood. Huh. I'm going to show everybody the beast. The, you know, the beast with the severed torso. But I got news for you. If this is your first time playing Rondo of Blood. I'm going to tell you right now, when you enter the castle and all of a sudden there's like an explosion in the wall behind you and this beast comes out, it's like, it's like this big ram horned beast 
that's severed from the waist down and all you see is its pelvis sticking out with bloody entrails and it's just dragging itself toward you with its uh, with its hands, front legs. And you're like, you, it must have been like, Holy shit! The first time you play, you actually played this. I wish I could go back to 1993 and invite friends over. That's what I would want to do right now if I had a time machine. And it, it just, and then you run from this thing and you go into the next room and you're like, huh, that was great. I'm safe. And then the fucking wall breaks down and the thing's still coming for you. You hop onto a platform and it runs head first, decapitating itself into this fucking brick wall and it explodes. You don't know what you're dealing with here. And for God's sake, you don't, when you fall in this game, it's like you don't die. You fall to different areas. This game is huge, man. It's huge. We're talking about hours and hours and hours here. If you're going to complete this game, and there's achievements that you can, you can get. Not unlockables, but achievements that you can get. Beat the boss, beat the boss, full energy, beat the boss, full energy, all your hearts. Do this, open up this area, get this key, help this person. 49 achievements. This is new stuff for 1993. Achievements in video games? This is new stuff. Anyway, you f the first boss could be could be the dragon. The first the first boss could also be when you go down into the water you go down by the water and you get a, a, a ride on the ferry right from that guy gives you a ride on the ferry next thing you know you're fighting a fucking mad ball with that realistic eyeball and his jaws opening up and and, and he like, what or you're up on that bridge let me tell you something one of the most beautiful boss fights in this game is you're on that on that bridge and that dragon comes up and it loops around the bridge. Oh, yeah. Or it comes diving over the bridge. It's absolutely fantastic. No slowdown here, buddies. All right, we're talking about a lot of sprite work. Flames shooting everywhere. Backgrounds animated. A lot of horsepower. I don't think you realize that. Listen, other very special touches in this game. There's one part, I think it's third, of third level. You walk past in the chair. You're about to fight the, the uh, third level boss. The Minotaur. And uh, there's like a, a dead person sitting in a chair. And as you walk by the chair, they just turn to dust. It's like they didn't have to do that. That didn't have... The game would have been, would have been killer other than that. But they went the extra mile. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Second board, you fight the werewolf. Oh, he, he, the werewolf's great. He's in the back howling. He comes jumping into the foreground. And now you start to experience, now bosses have a desperation end move, right? Yeah. 
So you basically get all their energy down when they're down, when you basically kill the boss. They do like a desperation. I think the, doesn't the wolf do like this running uppercut at you? And they can hit you, and they can fucking kill you, man. Let me tell you something. This game is so well balanced. They knew with what was going to happen to the average player that they were going to get hit with that desperation move and die. I can't tell you how many times I got hit with that desperation move and died. And I was ready to take my joystick and just fucking crush it into fucking breadcrumbs. <laughs> And then, in, in Castlevania fashion, when you beat the boss, you get the wonderful sound of the orb that, you know, materializes in the sky. And of course, it, you gotta get the, the orb with a, with a jump and full whip extension. It's, it's a must. You got to do it. If you're playing a, a Castlevania game where they don't have the you, give you the ability to catch the orb with full whip extension, turn off the machine and throw that game in the trash. Because that's all it is. Some other little touches are when you, there's one part where you're walking up some stairs and there's moths flying around like uh, the lanterns. And the moths come down and they fly around you. But they don't, they don't attack. They're just there. They fly around you and then you get close to a light and they go and they fly back around the light again. I mean, unbelievable. Or on, what is it, the, was it the fourth or fifth stage? The ship stage where you're on the like the haunted ship I think it is where you fight the painting remember the painting comes off the wall and it's spinning at you and if it hits you it basically kills you and you become part of the painting <laughs> guys this 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 game covers everybody Dracula you have a you have this well. Let, let, we'll get to that in a second. When you let me tell you something. One of the fr most frustrating boss battles to me is fighting death. What is it? The fifth level? What is it, after the ship stage? Oh my god! And I got news for you, death. When he's in the background and he starts he starts firing those skulls at you. It's mode seven scaling. Turbo Duo can't do it! What are you kidding me? I hear I hear my CPU winding up like a turbo on a Greyhound bus when it happens. You don't even know. You don't even fucking know. Oh yeah. Stage stage four boss, you fight this skull, and there's this woman there, like on the floor, and you and, and like uh, you go up and give her a hug, and she starts spitting out hearts. Which helps you, but by the fact that you're standing there giving her a hug leaves you vulnerable to the boss attack. Oh, no, it's, it's just like the coolest thing ever. Then we get we get to stage right when you, uh, other thing is when you fight death. When death dies, it's the greatest thing. He cuts his own head off with his scythe. I mean, come on, he's sitting there decapitated. Not only that, when you when you first get encountered death, uh, he's like saying something in Japanese. Whatever he's saying, he means it, baby. There's no fucking around here. 
ここから先には行かせぬいやいや Then we get to what is it? Six? Level six? And it's basically a, a boss rush. Oh my god, so much fun. So much fun. I remember first playing this boss rush mode and being like, I gotta fight another guy? I remember I fought. The, it's the bat first, right? You fight the bat, you're like, oh, I got through him. And then、uh, Medusa comes out. And you're fighting Medusa. And. Okay, you beat her, and then it's like, what? What? Here comes、uh, the mummy. It's like, they, now you fight the mummy, you kill the mummy, and then Frankenstein comes out. Listen, every monster the mummy, Medusa, Frankenstein,、uh, skulls, bats, Dracula, werewolf, they packed it all in. You, do you understand that? And there's this big pentagram that turns every time you beat one of the bosses, and another boss drops down. Thrilling, thrilling, this boss rush fight out of nowhere for stage six. So, so interesting. And let me tell you something. My two favorite bosses, it's got to be the Minotaur and then Frankenstein. Frankenstein comes out, he looks like, like old time Frankenstein. And he's shooting the lightning out of his hands. The mummy has the wraps that are flying all over the place. Oh my god. You get to stage seven, you got your clock tower, right? This is like, this is the obligatory clock tower stage, you know? Gears turning, this, that, the other thing. The board, again, the boss there is incredible. It's like you're fighting three different、uh, entities. There's that woman, there's that big、uh, dragon swooping around. And then you have this like head coming out of the ground. I mean, this is like insanity. Nine stages in Dracula X. But I mean, ultimately, your final battle with Dracula. And I mean, it doesn't disappoint. It's the classic, it's the classic Castlevania Dracula, right? Where he sits there and holds out his cape and the fireballs come out, you know? <laughs> What's it? <laughs> Laughing, you know, cocky Dracula. Classy guy. <laughs> This, and then he turns into the big monster. And then this is where the, like, the parallax scrolling in the background goes bananas. Goes bananas. And ultimately, you beat Dracula and you're done, right? No, you're not done. Then you can go back through the game and unlock everything. I've not, I've, I haven't seen all of this game. No. This game is big. And I don't know how to stress that enough. I don't think people really understand that. This game is fucking huge. I'm going to tell you right now if you're a novice. Listen, if you like playing Castlevania, you're a novice and you start this game, I'm going to tell you right now, it's a minimum five hours. It's got to be a minimum five to six hours. And then you could stretch it out from there. Oh, yeah. We just scratched the surface. I just, I want you, you need to know that. We just scratched the surface here. It's very important that you understand that. You've got to go out and get your. There's no hype here. There's no hype. Find a copy of this game. 
and treat yourself. Treat yourself. Thank you, Ian. Ian McTavish. For allowing me to talk about this sensational game. I feel like a, a fucking uh, a dope trying to explain this game to you. I really do. It's tough. It's a heavy weight. But you just tuned into the greatest video game program in the history of human civilization. And you better believe that. With a 4K face!